Hello, I'm Carla Schroer of Cultural Heritage Imaging, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with the Digital Lab Notebook software. There's a series of videos that will get into different aspects of the software. This one is really just how you get started with it and how the interface is laid out. So, to get the software, what you're going to do is go to the Cultural Heritage Imaging website. It's culturalheritageimaging.org. And on the What We Offer menu, you go to Downloads. And that will bring you to this page. On this page, you can see right here the Digital Lab Notebook software. When we click on that, that's going to take us to the page where we can actually download the software. And there is a version for Mac and a version for Windows. These come with installers and there's installation guides if you have any trouble getting them installed. I also want to point out the user guide. There is a very extensive user guide for the software that has tons of information and much more in depth than what we're going to be able to cover in these relatively short videos. So let's just take a quick look at the user guide. It's a PDF and it uses bookmarks to allow you to click into any part of it that you might be interested in uh, very, very easily. And of course you can search and, and other things. So really encourage you to get the user guide. Okay, so once the software is installed and you start it, you're gonna have uh, these tabs across the top. There's a welcome screen that just has some basic information, and then these are really the two places where you'll be working, the prepare screen and the projects and bundles screen. Okay. So I want to say something about the software and how it's structured before we dive in here. And that is that the software, when you install it, and this is desktop software, it does not work over the internet, does not require an internet connection once you have it installed. This software uses a database and it installs a free open source Postgres database in the installation package. It makes its, its own copy of that within our directories that are part of the Digital Lab Notebook. So if you're using that software for some other purpose, um, there won't be any confusion between these copies. So the purpose of the database is to allow us to save and organize and reuse and duplicate the records and relationships and things that we're building with the Digital Lab Notebook. But the database is not our goal. Our goal is not to build a database. Our goal is to be able to produce archival submission information packages for our imaging projects. And that means we're going to produce metadata using the database uh, to export that information as needed. Um, and there'll be another video about how to do the actual, build the actual archival packages. So as a quick review, the Digital Lab Notebook is designed to support uh, sets of images and specifically images for reflectance transformation imaging or RTI, photogrammetry, spectral imaging sets, and there's another category that's called documentary image sets. And you can use that if you have a set of images that document something, but you can also use that category for things like stitched images, focus stacking, um, high dynamic range images, anything where you might take a set of images and put them together on the computer. This tool could help you with metadata about those kinds of projects and then wrapping them up when it's done. Okay, let's dive in to the interface here. Um, on the prepare screen are a number of things that you might want to put in before you get started with your imaging projects. A lot of these things are one-time entries. You're going to put in information about um, your institutions, about your equipment, and so forth. If you have standard ways that you process data, we can put that in one time and reuse it. The system is very consistent in how it talks about things, labels things, and is structured. So let's take a minute and look at an example. Uh, here we'll start with equipment. And so when I first click on that button, I get an overview screen. And that's going to be true for any of those buttons. And you can see here all of the equipment that's in the database when, when you, this is the sample data when you install it. And 
that's a pretty long list. I don't want to go hunting for things. So at the top of the overview screen are going to be various ways that we can filter this data to help us find exactly what we're looking for. So for example, I can filter by category and I can see the cameras that are in here. I can see the lenses that are in here and so forth. Um, I can also, uh, I, can, I can choose to remove that so I'm not filtering and I get everything again. I can search by name or any part of a name. So let's say, you know, macro, I want to find macro lenses. So that's going to bring up uh, anything that has macro in the name. I can also use these in combination. So I can have a category and then also further filter it. Now you'll notice here along the bottom there are some buttons and they're grayed out. And the reason for that is because nothing is selected. So if nothing is selected, the only option I have is to make a new thing. But as soon as I select something, let's say this macro lens, now I have the option to look at the details for it and possibly edit those, duplicate that record, which is a very powerful feature that we have throughout the system, uh, because many things that we do are like things that we've already done. And so if we have a record, uh, that looks like something close to what we need, we can start from that and just make a few edits and save it, give it a new name, and so forth. We can also delete things. So let's uh, click on the details, and you'll see here what looks like just a database form. And remember that with the Digital Lab Notebook, you can put in as much or as little information as makes sense for you, for your institution, for your projects. So it's a very flexible system. There are a very small number of things that are, that are required for the system to work, but pretty much all this other stuff, it's up to you. It can be very, very powerful uh, to put in all of this information. So looking at this lens, we have the ability to um, fill in information about it. We also have an open notes field, some of the kinds of things that we make here. You can just type in notes if there's something special you want to say and we don't have a category for it. Equipment also has a couple of special rules that aren't like any of the other categories, which is that um, it, these ones that are grayed out down here, if I have a lens, which is the category I'm using here, that lens can have a thread diameter, which I can enter. And if I'm using filters or I'm using lights and I'm in that category, then these things might be available to me. And that would allow you to keep track of things that you might be using for um, spectral imaging, for example. So this, uh, this system allows us to put in all kinds of information about our equipment. And that's great, but that could be a really big list depending on how specific we want to get. So when we're working, we tend to think about our equipment in kind of kits or sets of gear. And so we have the ability to put a group of uh, equipment together in what we call a subassembly. And a subassembly is essentially a named list of equipment. And what that does is when we go to do our imaging, it lets us really, really easily find the things that we usually use together. So let's say I have a kit of things that I take with me when I travel to do RTI. I can build a named list of um, those things, and then it's very, very easy to find them and add them to my individual Im imaging project when I get there. So let's just look at one of these. Um, here's a... Uh, big tripod platform. So we can we can have as many of these as we want, call them whatever makes sense so that you can find things. And what we're seeing here is the equipment that I have associated with this subassembly. And then here's all of the rest of the equipment that's not yet associated. And I can sort that by categories so that I can find things that might be that might be missing from from what I'm doing here. Okay. And uh, I can also type in part of a name and find things that way or in combination. So this is a really helpful feature when I do my imaging projects to get all of the equipment. Let's look at something else. Uh, take a quick look here at the stakeholders. So for the stakeholders, these are usually institutions, but they could be people. And um, what we can do is give information about them and then we can associate them with our work as we go forward. 
So let's look at cultural heritage imaging here. And like many of the systems, uh, many of the types of things, there are some tabs along the top for different kinds of things that we might want to uh, include information about. So here's the general information about cultural heritage imaging. Um, it is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. I have a list of um, types of stakeholders, and those are just some that we started with. But what's really cool about this is that these are set, can be set by you. So the user has the ability to make whatever list they want here. The purpose of these lists, these what we call user defined types, uh, is so that you can make it work for you and you can we can limit it kind of creates a controlled vocabulary so we can limit the different kinds of things that somebody might say about something so we don't have a situation where one person uses an acronym and somebody else spells it out and somebody spells it slightly differently and so forth so this is uh, useful so there are multiple places in the system where you can set up these these uh, types and if you go up here to the edit menu at the top um, you'll see all the different kinds of things that are user-defined types. So the user-defined types are really just a label and there's a short description. So the one we were looking for here is the stakeholder types. And one of the other things about the system that's really helpful is that while I'm here in the main window, this lets me kind of find all the things that I might want to do to prepare for a project before I start working. But let's say I'm actively filling out records and I don't have something that I need. You also can uh, get to that same location where you want to use it. So for example, Cultural Heritage Imaging has a location which is the Chi Studio, but let's say I was working somewhere that I didn't have in the system. Uh, I could go to Manage Locations right here, get to that Locations Overview page, add a new one, start from one that exists, so forth. Similarly, if I have a user defined type, I can do all of those from this edit menu or when I go to use one, I can do it from right here and make the ones that I want to make. So we'll just I'll just show you what one looks like. Like I said, it's a label, a name with a description and the description is just so that people can use it consistently and you can edit those as needed, delete them, make your own, whatever makes sense for you. That's the main stuff I wanted to show you in this first video. Stay tuned for some other videos where we're going to dive into actually building out uh, records and building out archival submission packages. If you have questions when you're working with the system, your first place to go is going to be that uh, user guide. And then we also have free user forums where you can go and ask questions, answer questions, uh, take part in the community. Thanks for watching and look out for the other videos.